following on from our pineapple beer that we made uh, a couple of weeks ago. Today we're going to make a, a recipe called a smash which um, stands for single malt and single hop. Very simple recipe, one malt, one hop, one pot. I've got this handy beer pot and most kitchens should have them. They, they've got a, multiple uses. Uh, I find a lot of people use them to make pasta. Um, it's got a removable sieve, which is quite handy. We'll need one kilogram of milled grain, five liters of water, a thermometer, and a spoon, oh, and some hops. So to make a beer, there are four simple processes. Mash, boil, cool, and ferment. Mashing is the process of adding grain to fairly hot water. The water must be around about 68 degrees Celsius and it needs to stay there for around about an hour. Once the mash is complete, we then go to the boil. Boiling gets rid of any impurities and to sterilize it. The boil will last around about an hour. We then cool it down as fast as possible so that we can introduce yeast into this. And then once we introduce the yeast from around about 20 degrees Celsius, we then let the yeast do its work and ferment for a couple of weeks. So I'm now preparing to mash. I'm gonna add five liters of water to the pot and then bring it up to around about 70 degrees Celsius. We're gonna use this vessel later as our fermentation vessel. I'm preparing the water now. I'm trying to get it up to about 70 degrees. At 70 degrees, we will add in our malt. Um, the malt is slightly colder than the water, so it will bring the temperature down a little bit. We're looking for a target of around about 67 degrees Celsius. For the 60 minutes, we will get a really good conversion of uh, carbohydrates to the sugars that we want. We're looking for maltose sugars, and they are very simple sugars for our very simple yeast. It's important that we keep this temperature, so uh, a thermometer is required. Okay, we've got to 70 degrees. Now I'm gonna add in my malt. You wanna stir it. You don't want clumps sticking together and forming. And we wanna keep that there for the next 60 minutes. Every few minutes you want to turn the burner on just to keep the temperature up. We're sitting just on 65 degrees at the moment. So I want to push it up until it's about 67 and keep it there. Okay, it's lunchtime and I've been banished from the kitchen. So I've moved everything downstairs into the cottage. All you need is a heat source. Every now and again you put the, the element on just to keep the temperature up. Okay, it's been an hour now at uh, 67 degrees. I think all our sugar conversions have, have been done, which should give us about a 5% beer at the end of the day. So what I'm gonna do now is crank up the temperature a bit, take the grains out, and then let this liquid boil. I'm gonna let it drain into this pan, otherwise my arms are gonna get cut, and I'll drop something out. This is what it looks like. Before it gets to the boil, to remove the lid, otherwise it's going to boil over and make a holy mess and you won't be allowed to do this in the kitchen at home anymore. So just remember to keep it coming back and checking it every couple of minutes. What we need to do now is just plan for our hopping schedule. We're using a hop called Eureka or you cannot and uh, it's got a very high alpha acid um, ratio which which means it can be very bitter but this is quite an aromatic hop so you can use it for bittering and aroma because it's got a high alpha acid around about 17 percent we are only going to add a very small portion of it right in the beginning so we're going to use about 20 grams altogether comes in a packet like this so i'm going to split the packet up into five grams in the beginning and the rest is going to go in right at the end of the boil that way we're not going to be too bitter okay our boil has just started i'm going to add five grams of the hops right now at the beginning so we're going to boil them in the liquid for 60 minutes the rest we're going to add in right at the end mm, it's 
smell amazing. Okay, we are um, 40 minutes into our boil now. Checking everything looks good. Um, it's time to crack open a beer. Cheers. Been boiling for 60 minutes now. It's about time to switch it off. Everything looks good. It smells delicious. I'm going to switch it off, take it off the heat, put the other hops in. These hops I'm going to let stand for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to start the cooling. It's quite important to cool this um, wort down now. We need to cool it down to below 60 as soon as possible. It's been standing for a few minutes while the hops have been infusing. We put in a kilogram of grains into this uh, mixture. When we took out a kilogram of grains, those kilogram of grains were infused with water, so we've taken that water out. This is a hack for um, small batches like this. Um, what you would normally do is try and cool this down as quick as possible, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add a kilogram of ice. So to replace the water that we took out with the grains, we're not going to be diluting this beer in, in any way, and we're killing two birds with one stone. We're cooling it down and getting the gravity right. We're going to be um, putting our ice in now, bringing our temperature down as quick as po possible. Another way of doing this is to um, freeze a couple of two litre Coke bottles with, um, with water in them the night before we brew. And if we then just dunk those bottles in, we don't want to dilute the, the liquid that we've got here. While the liquid is cooling down, it's important that anything that it touches is sterile. So I will sterilize anything that it goes to, so we don't want it picking up bacteria. There is a little bit of crud at the bottom of the pot, which we don't want to take across. This is called trib or trub. You don't want that sitting in here and giving the yeast too much work to do. That we can leave behind and discard it. Now this is just to show you what it looks like. There's a, a mixture of, of hops and protein that we don't want anything in there. Okay, finally the last thing that we're going to be doing now is we're going to do a thing called pitching the yeast. I've measured out five mils of yeast, which is enough for this amount of uh, liquid. 5 mils of yeast into this 20 degrees Celsius. If you pitch it in when the temperature is too high, the, the yeast gets a bit angry and it starts giving out funny flavors. 20 degrees is happy. Pitch it in. Yeast uses oxygen in the first few hours to establish its colony. It then starts producing CO2. So we want to shake this up. Introduce as much oxygen to the liquid as possible. Now we want to loosen a little bit and let it do its thing. There's a sugary liquid in here, there's some yeast in here, yeast consumes sugar and excretes ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide. Now if we seal this container up it'll just build up and build up carbon dioxide and eventually it'll just pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a one-way valve to let the CO2 out, but to not let other um, organisms or products in. You can see I've got a latex glove, cut a, cut a finger off it. I'm now going to use that finger as my, as my one-way valve. And I'm just gonna make a little hole in the top to let air out. What will happen is now the CO2 will just expel itself it's starting to do it already. So um, it will blow up and then out the hole. Because it's forcing air out, nothing can come in. And when it finishes fermenting, the hole will just close up and all over. We'll see you in a couple of days.